Hi everyone and welcome back to my painting channel. Today is Thursday so that means a new tutorial for you and this time it's a watercolour. The watercolour this time is going to be the uh, Thames Barge behind me. It's going to be as a time lapse on YouTube so sit back and enjoy that and don't forget at the end of it you can fast forward, run backwards, pause it anywhere you like to have a go yourself and I really do encourage all of my uh, students here and everybody who watches my videos to at least try and have a go themselves and don't forget my email is in the uh, details below so you can always email me the results of your efforts and I do look forward to seeing some of those and I'll answer and put comments to each and every one of them in the meantime if you do want to see the whole of this video then let me invite you to pop over to my Patreon page it's now up and running and I've got my first two Patreons which is fantastic news for me and for the channel moving forward so if you want to see more content pop over there look at all the tiers see if, it's, if there's something there that really interests you and then by all means you're very welcome to come on board as a patron that would be fantastic in the meantime watch this video oh before I go before I finish I just want to say a nice shout out to my new patrons one is Wendy Salmon and the other one is Tina Adkins thank you very much to both of you for your support and and uh, moving forward so that's great and I can't thank you enough in the meantime have a look at this video and I catch you all on the other end bye bye for now guys bye okay let's get right in now first off is going to be the drawing and it's a very simple drawing the main detail is going to be the actual Thames barge itself and I'm using a mechanical pencil with a 4B lead inside I prefer that nice chunky dark so that I can get some good drawing on the paper and now for my watercolors I actually do not I know some people really do not like to see the pencil lines on their watercolor I quite like that I like to see the uh, drawing and it's all part of the painting process as far as I'm concerned so I rarely if ever try and take any of the pencil lines out now you'll see on this drawing that I'm trying to plan and um, get the dimensions of this vessel quite early on there's a sort of side running board because you've got to bear in mind these vessels are flat bottom and as such they um, they have no keel uh, because they go up the rivers and they settle down on the mud of the rivers at low tide so they have these uh, stabilizing plates on each side so that they can be dropped into the water uh, when you can imagine these things under full sail there's an awful lot of canvas being carried by these and they could probably quite easy flip uh, in the wrong hands or in the wrong winds now I've made a bit of a mistake, a bit of boo-boo. I went a little bit too far with the size, so I'm reshaping. Took a little bit out with an eraser and reshaping the size of the boat and pretty much everything else. So it's a, it's a process. It's a measuring, it's a looking, and it's decision-making process when you come to draw. But as you can see, the whole of this painting is merely about getting this boat just about right. And I'm going to start measuring up for the mast now and I'm putting I've got the reference nearby and I'm putting the pencil on the same angle so I'm trying to plot not only the size but the angle of that mast to get it right the thing about a Thames barge is it's actually uh, two masts in one so what happens is that you get the first mast which is the bulkier one of the two the, the one that's actually pretty much permanently in place and then you get the top section which is raised up and down on pulleys so from that point of view um, you you sometimes see them when they're they're not in use with the two masts side by side where they've been lowered and, and not not in use then there is this other spar that I'm drawing in now which keeps the um, I don't know what sail that is. I'm not too. I'm not a sailor, so I don't really know which one that is. But that rear sail and the boom that holds it up in place has another spar that goes up and is hauled up with it. So that keeps the whole thing rigid. And you can see that the way I've drawn this, that you've got the second part of the mast which is now in place, and that carries yet a further mast, a topsail, a topsail, 
um, of canvas and these canvases if you're not familiar with this vessel they're pretty much always this rich terracotta color in the canvas beautiful to see especially if you're painting them against a blue sky they really do stand out on a great sunny day it's just beautiful to see them now the the story as i really understand these is that they are as i said they're flat bottom boats so they can traverse most of the rivers and they they plied their trade up and down the east coast of england uh, in years gone by and there were huge fleets of these things up and down the intercoastal waters of the UK and as such um, they were pretty much family owned they were they were manned by normally a father maybe his son or a mate and often a dog as company and I believe one or two had the lady wives with them who did the cooking and other things but generally the whole boat was manned by two people now today i think uh that you don't ever go on one of these without a big complement of crew to do all the various little jobs that in the former days when it was just uh, a trading boat uh, just two people did and it's it's amazing really because when you see these under full sail today everybody seems to have a job everyone seems to be doing something and yet um in days gone past just two people did all those jobs because the conditions of sailing haven't changed and just putting in the insignia on the top sail and the pennant that often goes along with these boats to identify them and what i have done or what this video may not show is i then used um a small um pebio uh what do they call it a um masking fluid pen just to take out fairly precise areas of white such on the uh, insignia which i can't obviously protect too well with the paint so i wanted to mask that out and um, also mask other little points now i'm shaking up the masking fluid it's contained in a, uh, a little pen type thing and i've shaken that up just to get it activated and get it moving but then the nice thing is it's a blue color so you can see precisely where you're putting this stuff and then I have to really let it dry before I proceed. So there will be a little, a little delay for me, but not much of a delay for you as I wait for the uh, masking fluid to dry before I then commence to do this or start the painting. I'm running around the fluid around the top edges of the boat because there is a little bit of white marking, a little bit on the waveforms along the side of the boat. <coughs> Now for the color. I'm going straight in with some cobalt blue. And it's on rough paper. I forgot to mention that, guys. It's on um, 300 pounds uh, rough paper. So you can see that where the brush is a little bit dry, it's skipping over those bumps in the paper quite nicely. And leave those. Don't be afraid of leaving white spaces. They sort of give the effect of clouds and other forms. Now I'm going to be adding in a little bit of uh, the Venetian red. That gives a very dirty purple, but it's a stunning color to descend down to the horizon on this particular day. It's a sunny day, but there's like a hazy... Um, I don't say it's, it's born from uh, pollution, but it's just this hazy violet color that comes on down towards the horizon. But I'm not worried about the white paper being left, as you can see. But I'm keeping the bead rolling in the wash that really is important to keep that bead going because you can add colors as i'm doing adding a little bit of a thalo green a bit of blue into there to to create the light color of the sea now it looks a little bit harsh a little bit dark right now but it won't be because when that dries up and you'll see further into this video as that dries up it fades off it gets lighter now I've added in a little bit of uh, cooler thalo uh, just to uh, reinforce the base of the sea. Now for the really interesting part. A smaller brush, smaller round brush, but I'm going in with some uh, Venetian red and a little bit of burnt sienna to start the detailing in of the sails. And being very careful to preserve the little areas of sky that run through the uh, between the mast and the, the sail itself 
I'm just working very careful. Now I actually missed a bit. Uh, I'm trying to take this out as best I can with my eraser. It's not a complete uh, uh, repair, but it nonetheless, it doesn't really take away from the painting. But it's just a sure sign that when you are doing something like this, just watch where you're you're going. It's very easy to paint over something when you're moving quite fast and completely mess something up or miss something. I caught that just in time, but it would have been much nicer had I been able to leave it out in the first place. I've added some other values of a little bit darker in the base of that sail. So what it is and the reason for that is you remember I drew the spar in that, that diagonally dissects the outer part of that uh, sail to the base. Well, that the sail lays across that in a way. So you get two aspects of light. You get the top side where it's hitting the light and the lower side where it drapes down um, and is catching uh, the shade. And that's because the boat is leaning uh, to the right hand side slightly as you can see from the picture so the sail would lay against that you don't actually see that uh, spar on this aspect of the boat if the boat was coming the other way yes you would you'd see that spar and the sail would be uh, not so taut against it and uh, and so you would you would paint it in a different way the boat is pretty much black so I'm mixing up some really dark colors now in terms of black and those blacks are normally with me indigo uh, with some uh, either Venetian red or some um, burnt sienna in there just to give that dark. But as you can see, I'm taking it off to a little bit more indigo in this case so that you get that paler blue color when you take some more water with it on that stern. Lifting out a little bit now because it's not so strong a black, but this will... Uh, set me up later on to reinforce some of the darks as and where I need them in the future. I'm not too worried, as I said, about the waterline because uh, there is a little bit of a, um, an angle there and there is a bit of red that goes in there, but the waterline has been marked out, so it's not a big deal. Now I'm putting in the mast, and again I'm using a dark, which is indigo and some umber, and I'm just suggesting some of the, the uh, lines in there. I'm not too worried about the finality of those lines. They're just merely suggestive, that's all. That one, although, got to say, it was a little heavy, but we'll get away with that. Now I'm putting some really darker, where the, where the ropes taut the, uh, you know, where they hold the uh, foresail or any sails, then you get a little concentration of dark shadows in the, in the edges or in the top corners and so I'm trying to suggest that in the folds uh, of these sails <clears throat> additional um, little areas of color just being floated in on the top of the original base color of each mask and not forgetting the little one at the back there too Again at the top, adding some deeper values, and now I'm remembering where that uh, top sill breaks away and there's sky through there. But it, as I said, it's not going to be as good had I not missed it in the first place. Just adding more washes in on these sails and just suggesting greater depth uh, as um, I, I carry on painting. And again, that little back sail has a small spar that diagonally cuts across again because of the angle of the boat you can't see that it's blindsided but it is there and there will be a, a way that the sail drapes against it and creates a, an additional fold now i'm putting in some darker areas uh, to reinforce the stern and the back end of the boat as the uh, uh, shape of the boat goes underneath to that shallow stern and I'm also putting and reinforcing the darks at the waterline back through the uh, shape of the boat generally. And of course that planing board. I'm not sure the actual name of it, but you get the idea. I want to reinforce the sea now and I've allowed it to dry so that I can skip and leave areas out as I wish. But it's a fairly cloudy day over the back and behind me. So there wasn't a great deal of sunshine, although the sky does suggest it in my picture and true enough that's how it was and you'll see from the original photograph that's running with this but 
the the cloud was quite a bit behind me and so it did cast this overall shadow texture on the sea in the foreground but i think it adds to reinforce the whole picture overall back into the sail now and it dried off before so i'm adding a little bit more in in terms of washes stronger washes as i said where that spire runs through so there's a little bit of light above it and there's a little bit of uh darker richer colors uh below and just to reinforce that i've just lifted out with damp brush and a little bit of clear water nothing much but more damp brush than anything else just to lift out a little bit of pigment to reinforce the uh, bend on that um, uh, canvas as it goes and lays over that spa. And I think I'm calling it a spa correctly. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm sure people out there who know tons about these vessels can correct me. Now these little bits and tweaks on the deck are people and bits of... Um, stuff that they need to run the boat now you're not going to see the crew you're not going to see the individuals so they're merely taps and shapes that reinforce and the brain does the rest of it you see me put a little bit of uh, redness or um, uh, color into that uh, area below the uh, main color of the boat and you saw me reinforce also a little bit of green and blue uh, right at that baseline the reason for that is that there is a somewhat a little bit of a shadow nothing much in reflection in the water but it also helps that when you take the masking fluid off you will see so much more of that white set against the darker as i've said before when you want something to appear lighter make everything around it somewhat darker and vice versa it really is worth considering and bearing that in mind for the future Hi everybody, I'm sure you got something from that and I hope you enjoyed it. And with that said, don't forget if you do want to see the full version, then you need to hop over to that Patreon page of mine. It is new, there's not too much on it at the moment, but I assure you I'm working very, very hard to add more content to it all the time. So thank you for my two new patrons once again. And I'll, uh, well I'm not going to keep rambling, but I see each and every one of you on the next video next week. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but it'll be a surprise probably for me as much as it is for you. Catch you all on the next one. Happy painting for now. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button and uh, add your comments. They'd be very welcome and always answered. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button now. And for your information, there's another video there and another video there. All the best. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Bye.